Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we're going to talk about a deadly fish disease that is contagious that even humans can catch and it is more common than you think it is. The disease I'm talking about is fish mycobacteriosis also known as fish tuberculosis or fish TB for short. We're going to show you signs to look out for so that you can spot it in its early stages and we're going to show you how we make the diagnosis to be able to confirm fish mycobacteriosis. And to finalize, we're going to talk about the prognosis, the treatment and management options available to you and also how to avoid your fish and yourselves from catching this disease. So here is a footage of a dwarf gourami that is thin. Mycobacteriosis is a chronic disease so it takes a while before the fish show clinical signs. Why I'm saying this dwarf gourami is thin is that you can see the bony prominences. They're sort of triangular. The apexial or the back muscles are actually quite uh, reduced in thickness uh, giving it an angular look. In this tank full of Daniels, what you'll notice there's one individual here that is in thin body condition score. He is also reduced activity levels and has loss of body coloration. This fish is confirmed as being infected with fish tuberculosis. And what's important to note here is that although the other fish in the same tank appear to be happy and healthy, they are also likely to be infected and carrying the disease. Although it's more commonly found in freshwater tropical fish, it can also affect cold water fish such as the goldfish and marine fish. So apart from looking thin, uh, fish can also present with dropsy. So this rosy barb here has got a serious case of dropsy. The scales are protruding, the eyes are bulging out, and there's also hyperemia or redness on the skin of the fish. In some cases, fish may present as being heavy and loss of buoyancy as you can see in this Oscar. And in this dwarf gourami, it can also present not only be by being thin, but also with skin lesions as you can see the discoloration on the top of its head here. Skin lesions can also present as little white bulging areas under the skin as you can see towards the tail here of the epistogramma on its side. And what you'll notice as well in this picture is that the feces is uh, white in colour uh, signifying that it's got some gastrointestinal upset. Skin lesions can also appear as pockmarks as you can see here on the silver gourami's face. The lesions in this particular individual wax and waned over a one year period before it died. In this rainbow fish, you can see the mouth is rotting away. It resembles what looks like flavobacteria or flexibacter infection, but it's in fact mycobacteriosis. As well as skin ulcerations, sometimes fish mycobacteriosis can present as large lumps that appear as tumorous growths but is in fact not in tumor but an inflammatory reaction. Oscars typically get this bump mainly from rubbing against the glass sides and in causing traumatic injury the mycobacteria can enter the skin and set up and cause an inflammatory reaction called a granuloma. If you remember from the picture of the epistogramma with the diarrhea looking feces, this zebra daniel here has hyperemia or redness around the vent. Fish can also present with neurological issues like swimming haphazardly, as you can see in this rosy barb. So let's talk about how infectious this mycobacteria is. In this tank full of fish, what we've found is that there are only certain types of species here that are the ones that are being hammered. Those are the rosy barbs as well as the rainbow fish. Now, fish mycobacteriosis can be a zoonotic disease, which means humans can catch it. 
Here is a granuloma, as you can see on the forearm of a gentleman. And in this picture here, you can see a granuloma forming on the hand near the knuckle. The treatment in humans is surgical excision plus being on a combination of antibiotics for months to years. Fish mycobacteriosis in humans is called fish fancies fingers. And the reason for that is that mycobacteria that's infecting fish is an environmental bacteria and they cannot tolerate or live in conditions where the temperature is high. So this is why it tends to be confined to the extremities of your body such as your fingers, hands, arms and possibly feet and legs. However, if you are immunocompromised, the disease could be worse. Make sure you get this diagnosed by your doctor. If you're handling fish a lot and you develop lesions such as sores or lumps on your hands, make sure you contact your doctor and get it checked out as soon as possible. So how do we diagnose mycobacteriosis in your fish? Basically, we need your fish. Uh, we would take them and put them into formalin fixation for histology. We can take smears for cytology and also swabs of the lesion or kidney for bacteriology. Normally, with a lot of fish diagnostics, we require very fresh, freshly euthanized fish for diagnostics. But in this case, even fish that have been stored in a freezer for months can be useful for diagnostics. If you're doing a necropsy, you can spot these granulomas that the bacteria incite the host fish to create. And you can see here on the liver, there are multiple white spots where it should normally be a homogeneous red color. If we were to do a wet preparation and view this down the microscope, you will notice these sort of slightly darker um, structures that are sort of round to oval shaped and have an onion skin type pattern. These are granulomas. Granulomas is a collection of immune cells known as macrophages and they form around material that's difficult to get rid of and in this case it is the mycobacteria organisms. But we cannot definitively diagnose mycobacteriosis based on this wet mount. So what we need to do next is to do a cytology smear. So in this case we have found the lesion, this one is from a skin, we've scraped it, spread it on a slide and applied diff quick stain to it. If you have a look at some of these cells, the cytoplasm contains these rods, uh, they don't stain up with anything, you can see more of them over here, and they're pretty much everywhere, and this is quite typical for mycobacterial infection. And the reason why they don't pick up stain is that they have this very thick waxy coat over the bacteria and that sort of repels the stain. So to confirm mycobacteriosis, we apply a stain called Zeal Nielsen stain with a background of malachite green. The mycobacteria, as you can see here, will stain up a pink to red color and their long rods that can occur in clusters or singly. Here is a histological image of a granuloma and you can see the sort of the wall of macrophages forming an onion ring skin pattern around what is necrotic material and the mycobacterial organisms. And for this reason, you can understand why treatment for fish mycobacteriosis tends to be ineffective. The medicine is not able to penetrate this thick wall of host cells and also attack the thick-walled mycobacteria. Here is a histological section of the brain of a fish that's infected with mycobacteria. You can see the granulomas there. Not quite apparent if you're not used to looking at histology sections, but when you stain it with your Zeal Nielsen, you can see it lights up in the red. These are the bacterial organisms. And this is the reason why some fish present with neurological signs with swimming in awkward and spinning motions. If the kidneys are infected, they'll lose their osmoregulatory balance and develop dropsy and Popeye or even sometimes 
anemia since the kidney is where blood is produced and in this case you can see granuloma in the liver if it is severe enough since the liver is the center of production of protein and its ability to maintain the oncotic pressure of the blood uh, fish can develop dropsy as a result of hypoproteinemia and here is a section of intestine and so if the intestine is infected what you'll notice is that fish will become thin over time and the reason for this is because they will be impaired in their ability to digest and absorb food. This brings me to the next point is that depending on which organ is infected is the way that the fish can excrete this into the external environment. So in this case it will be excreting the bacteria through its feces if the gills are affected through the gills and if you get skin sores they will be releasing more of this mycobacteria into the water through the ulcers. Now if you want to diagnose this to the species level you want to run fish bacterial cultures and on a plate on a bacterial agar plate you can see that they form this chalky white colonies. Sometimes it is important to know what species you're dealing with because there are quite a number that can be infecting your fish population and with the potential for zoonotic infection which means where humans can catch it. So in terms of zoonotic mycobacteria um, from fish, the most common are Mycobacterium marinum, Mycobacterium fortuitum, Mycobacterium chelonia, and Mycobacterium abscessus. Of these, Mycobacterium marinum is the worst of all because in fish it causes fairly high mortality rates of 30 to 100 uh, percent, causing severe peritonitis and granulomas in multiple organs. With Mycobacterium fortuitum, they do cause dropsy, and the Mycobacterium chelonia tend to result in skin erosions and ulcerations, also with visceral in visceral organs. Unfortunately, there is no treatment available for fish affected with microbacteriosis. Basically, any fish that shows clinical signs of illness need to be removed from the whole population so as not to create potential areas of contamination. Management to help with the rest of your population or those that you wish to try to save will include trying to boost its immune system by providing optimal nutrition, water quality conditions and also by adding vitamin C to the water maybe on a weekly to a monthly basis at 10 milligrams per litre of water and also maybe boosting its innate immune system by addition of levamazole in the food incorporating it at 0.1 milligram per gram of food and feeding that to your fish every three days for five treatments and you'll be doing this periodically maybe every one to three months. So how can mycobacteria get into your system? Basically it can mostly enter through infected fish but also it can come from the soil or even your tap water. So if you have a pond uh, make sure that you have raised edges so that you don't get any runoff from the soil. You may notice that this pond is indeed quite green. Uh, it's not my pond, it's actually my cameraman's pond. The fish are doing really well, they're eating and growing and they look very happy and healthy as well. So in a future video, we'll talk a little bit more about pond construction and how to manage a green water situation. If you've got any questions about fish tuberculosis, post them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. As you can see here, this pond is under expansion and we can cover a little bit more about pond construction in a later video. So thank you for watching, make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.